Welcome, welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about the different steps uh, involved in inflammation and their uh, summary. In this video, we are going to talk about another very important topic related to the inflammation that is signs of inflammation also called as cardinal signs of inflammation. Well, let's start from the story. Suppose a pathogen, a bacteria, it has invaded inside the tissue. It has entered inside the tissue. So first of all, it will come across the macrophages because the macrophages are local immune cells that are present inside the tissue. So when a pathogen will come inside the tissue, it will be encountered by the macrophages that reside inside the tissue. So when the macrophages will recognize these pathogens as a foreign particle, in the previous video we have talked about that how these pathogens will be recognized by our immune cells by using PAMPs and PRRs, toll like receptors. This thing has been discussed in the previous video. So once this pathogen will be recognized uh, by this macrophages, it will this macrophage, it will release different cytokines like tumor necrosis factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, interleukin 1, interleukin 2 and these different kind of cytokines will be released by the macrophages. Now what is going to happen? Now these uh, cytokines, they will be having a receptor on the local mast cells. Mast cells are also present inside the tissue. They will be having receptors on the local mast cell. So when this <clears throat> interleukin 1, it will come on its uh, attack on its receptor. Similarly interleukin 8, it will come and it will attach to its receptor that are present on the mast cell. Similarly, when the pathogen has entered inside the uh, tissue, we know that if antibody has been produced, these antibodies, they will also come and attack over the pathogen. And we also know that the FC portion of the antibody can activate complement system, can activate complementary proteins. I have uh, given detailed lecture about the complement uh, proteins as well in the previous videos. Uh, the link will be given in the description. If you want to learn more about the complement system activation, you can watch my those videos. So once the complement protein will be get activated with the help of antibodies, there are two major complementary protein C3A and C5A. It also have receptors on the mast cell. So C3A and C5A, it will also act on its receptor on the mast cell. So once they will attach on the nearby mast cells, there are there are lots of mast, mast cells in the tissue. What will happen? The mast cell will release histamine that is present inside the granules. So there will be a degranulation and the histamine will be released outside of the mast cell in the tissue. Now this histamine, it will be having receptor on the vascular smooth muscle. This is a nearby blood vessel, this is a tissue and this is, by, this is a nearby blood vessel. Okay. Now this histamine, it will go and attach on the nearby smooth muscles. Once the histamine will go and attach to its receptors present on the smooth muscle, there will be a vasodilation, smooth muscle relaxation and as a result of smooth muscle relaxation, there will be a vasodilation. So obviously, if there is a vasodilation, more and more blood will move towards this region. So because of the vasodilation, what is going to happen? Because of the vasodilation, the blood flow that was coming towards this tissue with very fast speed, abruptly because of the vasodilation, it will get slow. It will get slow. And this uh, slowing of the speed of the blood will cause stasis. Stasis. And as a result, because of the slow movement of the blood, there will be a redness. There will be a redness on that particular tissue. So the first sign, the first cardinal sign of inflammation is the redness. And this redness will appear as a result of vasodilation because of the histamine. And some other mediator as well, for example, macrophage also release nitric oxide that can directly uh, attach on the smooth muscle and cause the vasodilation. So because of inflammatory response, the first uh, thing that is going to happen is vasodilation, smooth muscle relaxation and vasodilation and 
because of which redness can be seen when there is a more blood supply towards this tissue obviously the warmness the heat can also be felt the warmness or heat can also be felt so because of vasodilation and more blood supply towards this uh, tissue the second sign is heat heat the area will get warm that particular area around the tissue will get warm it will heat up now the second point is this histamine released from the mast cell this histamine it also has receptors on the endothelial cells on the endothelial cells not on the smooth muscles when it will act on the smooth muscle it will cause smooth muscle relaxation and vasodilation but when it will act on the endothelial cells it will cause and cell contraction once this cell will be contracted obviously this cell will get shrink the cell will get shrink cell will contracted and they will get shrink because of the shrinkage of endothelial cells a gap will be produced between the cell the uh, endothelial uh, the gap between the endothelial cell will increase as a result the fluid and the blood contact it will start leaking inside the tissue when the content of the blood will keep leaking inside the tissue it will cause a swelling it will cause swelling or edema accumulation of fluid in the tissue is called as edema so there will be a third sign of inflammation and that is called as edema edema or swelling so this is a third sign of inflammation okay then the fourth sign is obviously some other mediators like prostaglandins they will also get released by uh, uh, phospholipase a pathway this pathway will be discussed in uh, in the uh, in the next videos so some other mediators like prostaglandin will also release and that prostaglandin is responsible for the activation of pain nerves pain so the fourth sign of inflammation is pain so these are the four signs of inflammation redness heat edema and pain these are the four signs of inflammation that were been given by the romans about 2000 years ago but in the 19th century dr uh, rodolf virco that is also called as the father of modern pathology he introduced another sign of inflammation and that is loss of function loss of function in 19th century so the loss of function is another uh, sign so obviously in in, the, uh, in this case obviously tissue or cells are continuously being damaged by the host cells and by the pathogens or their toxins so they can uh, Uh, ultimately it can ultimately result in the loss of function of our tissue or in some cases whole organ so this is the five cardinal signs of inflammation one thing i would like to add here we have seen that histamine while it will act on the endothelial cell it will cause a shrinkage and the fluid will leak out and accumulation uh, fluid will be fluid will get accumulated inside the tissue that is basically called as edema but the accumulation of fluid is not only caused by the contraction of this endothelial cells there are certain other reason as well for example certain bacterial toxins molecular toxin they can directly cause the damage to the endothelial cell if these bacterial toxin directly cause a damage to the endothelial cell this can also cause the release of vascular content inside the tissue and accumulation of fluid can take place so this is the also reason of edema certainly uh, there is another cytokine that is called as vascular endothelial growth factor now this vascular endothelial growth factor it can also cause transcytosis 
Now, what is tonocytosis? There will be no contraction. There will be no damage. The endothelial cell will be intact. It will be, it will it will uh, exactly in its original position. But what will happen? The fluid or the vascular content it will enter from the one side by the process of endocytosis and it will leave the cell from the other side and enter inside the tissue by the exocytosis. So endocytosis or exocytosis will be taken place and the fluid will keep on leaking inside the tissue. The fluid will keep on leaking, leaking inside the tissue. And this process, this transcytosis, this transcytosis process is induced by this value of vascular endothelial growth factor. Uh, so this is all about the important cardinal signs of the inflammation and how different cytokines and different immune cells play their important role in developing these cardinal signs of inflammation. In the next video, we'll be talking about the acute and chronic inflammation and the mechanism how immune cell migrated inside the tissue and after migration what they do basically to eliminate the uh, pathogen of foreign particle. Stay with me. Thank you so much.